Hi, am I in the air? What is going down, everybody? It is season premiere night. Are you ready? September 2024. This is the season 29 premiere of Am I on the Air? What's going down, ladies and gentlemen? Don Mega here. I am your host, and I'm so happy that you're here to join me for Am I on the Air? Season 29, episode one. Tonight's show is titled, Are You Having a Good Time? We will be breaking down the news from August 28th through today, September the 3rd. That is right. It is a season premiere. It's September. All your favorite shows on network television are starting to come back. Everything's starting to ramp up. We had 33. We had 33 episodes in season 28. So we had a chock full season 28. And it is time to put that one to bed and have a fresh start. For season 29, I got one non-spoiler movie review for you, got a couple TV shows to talk about, and then of course, we'll get into the news of the week, and then we'll get you on out of here. Are you ready? Let's get her going. Our movie of the week is Blink Twice. Yes, I know it came out a couple weeks ago. I had a decision to make. Watch The Crow, or watch Blink Twice. And we leaned on The Crow. You know, you can't blame me. I told you on last week's episode... Crow is one of my all-time favorite movies. Had to go see the reboot. So Blink Twice had to sit on for a week. But got to the theater, checked it out. This, of course, the directorial debut of Zoe Kravitz. She also wrote the movie as well. It is a thriller. It is a mystery. It stars Channing Tatum, along with Naomi Aki, Aaliyah Shawkat, Christian Slater, Simon Rex, Adria Arona. So good to see her again. Haley Joel Osment, that's right, Six Sense, he's in here, and uh, some others, man. And this is a very, very interesting movie that, again, I'm going to kind of dance around because it's non-spoiler, and this is a very difficult movie to non-spoiler talk about. But here's the synopsis. When tech billionaire Slater King meets cocktail waitresses Frida at his fundraising gala, he invites her to join him and his friends on a dream vacation on his private island. But despite the epic setting, beautiful people, ever-flowing champagne, and late-night dance parties, Frida can sense that there's something sinister hiding behind the island's lush facade. Okay, so, yes, this is a pretty straightforward movie. You got a couple friends, they're cocktail waitresses, they want more but they don't get more and that's when Channing Tatum Slater King comes into play and they get lucky because he invites them to his private island which to put some context behind uh, you see it a little bit in the trailer but they talk about it at the beginning of the movie that um, Channing Tatum's character has kind of been me too uh, something has happened to him where he had to publicly apologize for his mistakes and for some wrongdoings and he's seeking therapy and he wants to be a better person right so we get that kind of out the way and we find out about this private island where he goes to seek his therapy and kind of clear his head well when we get to the island things are not as they seem so I'm going to kind of leave the story kind of stuff there and kind of give you my take after seeing this thing. I liked it, didn't love it. <laughs> so this movie's kind of right in the middle for me. I found the first half of the film very, very sluggish. It was very slow. I wasn't quite feeling it. About midway through the movie, as things start to happen, it started to gain my interest. And I'll tell you, the last 20 minutes of the movie... Super solid as everything unravels. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what's up. Let's get her going. But it's already the final 20 minutes of the movie. There's really nowhere else for it to go. Um, but it wraps up really ni nicely. And what I did dig about the movie 
is for the hour and 43 minutes of it, I spent a lot of time in my head wondering, is it this? Is it that? What's going on? I mean, I had all kinds of crazy ideas in my head of what this movie could have turned into. A lot of them, it did not happen. But I was like, man, how much are they going to swing for the fences here? Um, It's a pretty crazy movie. And there's some stuff in here so much that there's literally a trigger warning before the movie starts talking about how it could trigger some people who have been, you know, with domestic violence, that have been in abusive relationships, that that it could be trigger, uh, you could be triggered. So it actually has a warning in the beginning, which I found to be very interesting. So as far as the acting goes, everybody's awesome. I mean, Channing's great. Uh, Naomi Aki is great. Uh, Aaliyah Shawcott is really good in this too. She did a show on HBO and HBO Max called Search Party, which is really, really good. So it was good to see her kind of do something. Christian Slater is always great. Uh, Adria Arona is so good to see her again. She's fantastic in this. I loved her in Hitman a couple months back with Glenn Powell. So it was cool to see her in this. Um, yeah, everybody does their job. It's directed really well. It's acted very well. It just, like I said, the first half's kind of sluggish. The second half kind of pays off. It was an interesting watch. I don't know if I would sit down and kind of rewatch it. Uh, but I had a decent time watching it for the time that I did. So at the end of the day, I would give blink twice three out of five stars. Now moving on over to the TV side, got two new TV shows I checked out. The first one is called Chaos, and this is a new comedy, drama, fantasy, science fiction show that is on Netflix, and it stars Jeff Goldblum. That's right, and he plays Zeus as discord reigns on Mount Olympus and the almighty Zeus spirals into paranoia. Three mortals are destined to reshape the future of humankind. Now, this just came out Friday. I've watched the first two episodes of this, and I dig it. It's very interesting. It's got some really cool comedic elements. I like the style that it's going for. And Jeff Goldblum is just absolutely fantastic as Zeus. So it's an interesting kind of show. I'm not going to tell you that I'm super in love with it and you need to run and stream it. But I do like it a lot, and I do think it's worth you checking out. So check out Chaos over on Netflix. And my new other new show, I just watched this earlier today. It's called English Teacher. Now, this is a new comedy that just dropped. It's on FX. It streams on Hulu. And this is about a high school teacher in Austin who tries to balance the competing demands of the students and their parents in a world where the rules seem to change every day. And the tagline is learning from A to Gen Z. Um, I was interested in this. I saw the trailer, thought it looked really interesting. They dropped the first two episodes. I watched both episodes, and it's really, really funny. I really dug this show and give it a big thumbs up. So I will definitely be continuing to watch this one as new episodes drop. Uh, All the actors in it are super, super funny. Um, You got Brian Jordan. um, He's got like three names. I can't remember his third name, but he's the main character, and he's great. Um, Stephanie Coing. She's the main female on the show. She's amazing. Um, Brian Jordan Alvarez, that's his name. He's awesome. And then the um, PE coach, Sean Patton. Uh, He is awesome. I love this guy already. He's my favorite character in the show. So funny. So it's got a core little cast, three or four people, um, but it's dealing with the kids today, right? Dealing with straight, gay, LGBTQ, like just everything teachers have to deal with right now. And it was super, super funny. So, again, big thumbs up. Check this one out. It's on FX, and it streams on Hulu. So, that's the new stuff I got for you. In the movie side, Blink Twice, three out of five stars. Chaos, streaming over on Netflix, and English Teacher over on Hulu. All right. Let's get on over to the box office. And we got two sets of box office because it was a holiday weekend. So, anytime it's a holiday weekend, you got your three-day like we normally talk about, and we got your four-day for the holidays. So for the three-day, our traditional box office, it's mostly the same. There's a couple little tweaks, but at number 10, it's Coraline. Number nine is Afraid. Number eight, Despicable Me 4. Number seven, The Forge. Number six, Blink Twice. Number five, It Ends With Us. Number four, Reagan. Number three, Twisters. Number two, Alien Romulus. And number one, once again, Deadpool and Wolverine. The big debuts this week are Afraid, and Reagan, 
Uh, Afraid, I'm kind of interested in, but I'm hearing horrible things about it. And it definitely looks like more of an at home. You know, when this one hits Peacock, I'll be checking that one out. Uh, Reagan, you know, about Ronald Reagan, uh, it is what it is. Um, but that, that's your top 10 kind of without the holiday weekend. When you throw in the extra day for Labor Day, number 10 is Coraline. Um, I just want to side note, say, I can't believe, I mean, I can believe it, but I can't believe it that the crow after one week is already out of the top 10. It's number 13. So, um, that is insane. What a drop for the crow. I mean, I know it only made 4 million on week one, made 2 million on week two, but dropped out of the top 10 after one week. So, number 10, Coraline, number 9, Afraid, number 8, Despicable Me 4, number 7, Blink Twice, number 6, The Forge, number 5, It Ends With Us. Here's where it switches from the 3-day to the 4-day. Twisters actually dropped to number 4. Reagan bumped up a spot to number 3. Alien Romulus at number 2. And bringing in almost $20 million was Deadpool and Wolverine, again, sticking at that number 1 spot. So, Congratulations, man. Deadpool Wolverine just killing it. It made over $600 million domestically over the weekend, which is massive. The thing continues to just break in the billions of dollars, and it is just killing it. So that's your box office. Now let's get into our news of the week. And again, if you want to see any of these trailers, you want to read any more of these articles, the best place to get to everything is on our X page. You don't even have to subscribe at all just go to twitter.com slash am i on the air and you can see everything you need to see right on our feed whether you are a subscriber or not okay just put in the url easy peasy so kicking things off the first trailer dropped for terrifier 3 this movie hits theaters on october 11th oh man i'm so excited i you know i'm i was a late comer to the terrifier movies And I can't say I absolutely love them, but they're super interesting, and I've grown to really love Art the Clown. Um, And I'm excited for Terrifier 3, man. And this is supposed to get a wider theatrical release, and I am so down to see this in the theater because the other two I watched at home, and I can't wait for this, man. The, The popularity has blown up. I went to a Spirit Halloween the other day, and there's a giant Art the Clown there that you could buy for your house. I mean, he's really transcended. Uh, into that Mike Myers, you know, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger kind of style, and that's pretty damn cool. So check out the new trailer. It's a red band, October 11th, hidden theaters. I'm excited. One of my favorite shows of last year was over on Peacock. It was called Based on a True Story with Kaylee Cuoco, and I have been waiting for season two to come out, and we finally got our first baby teaser, basically an announcement that Based on a True Story season two is going to hit Peacock on November 21st. So it is coming, and I cannot wait for season two of Based on a True Story. Rebecca Ferguson, star of Dune and Mission Impossible. She is going to star alongside Andrew Garfield, Claire Foy, Nicola Coughlin, Jessica Gunning, and Jennifer Saunders in the film adaptation of Anid Blythe's beloved children's classic, The Magic Fairway Tree. Tim Burton talks about why Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis are not in the Beetlejuice sequel. So check that out if you'd like to learn a little bit more. I mean, basically, in a nutshell, he's just saying they're dead, they've moved on, and he didn't need to use them. So there you go. Um, But Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice coming out in theaters this Friday, the 36 years in the waiting sequel to Tim Burton's 1988 cult horror comedy hit was greeted with a warm standing ovation at this year's Venice Film Festival. Um, so, yeah, man, crowd on its feet. That is awesome. Uh, early reviews started coming out tonight, and most people are really, really liking it a lot. Netflix has acquired Angelina Jolie's Maria, uh, her new film that was also shown at the Venice Festival. So Netflix grabbed rights to that. We got some new character posters for Joker Folia Du. Nikki Glaser is going to host the 82nd Golden Globes. That's right. Uh, The popular comedian and scathing celebrity roaster, Nikki Glaser, will host the 82nd annual Golden Globes in January. She is thrilled, as she also says it's one of her favorite nights of television, and now she gets a front row seat. So congratulations there. Zoe Zaldana and Nicole Kidman, of course, returning for Lioness Season 2. And Season 2 got its release date October 27th over on Paramount+. Plus. I love Lioness, and that was a great season one. I cannot wait for season two, and I'm actually surprised. I didn't think this was coming out until next year, so very happy to see October 27th. 
Back in action, the Cameron Diaz and Jamie Foxx Netflix movie that was supposed to come out in November has been delayed. It will now come out January 17th, 2025. And here's what I'm going to say, because I see a lot of people speculating and wondering, why did this movie get pushed back, right? This movie finished filming a while ago. It was supposed to come out in November. Why the push back to January? And I don't have the answer for that, but I see a lot of people online speculating it has to do with Jamie, Jamie Foxx's health, uh, that they need to film more scenes. And who knows? Maybe there are reshoots. But what I can tell you is I've seen this movie already. So even though it doesn't come out till January 17th of 2025, I have already seen this movie. Now, I can't review it because of an embargo, which embargoes, you know, means shut your damn mouth and don't talk about it. I really shouldn't even be talking about that. I've seen it, but I just wanted to set the record that I saw a completed finished movie. So I don't know why the delay is. It might just be Netflix saying, Hey, we need something strong to kick us off in 2025, plain and simple, you know, but the movie is done. And, oh, you see, I almost spoke about what I thought about it. Uh, I can't, but I have seen the whole movie. And uh, I don't really understand the need to push it back, but hey, it is what it is. So January 17, 2025. VHS Beyond, we have the new trailer. It's going to be hitting Shudder soon, so take a look at that. VHS, man, such a love-hate relationship with this franchise. I loved it for the first several, and the last couple they put out have been utter dog shit. So I don't know, man. Hopefully VHS Beyond will um, really tick up its game. We have the teaser trailer for Rumors. This is Kate Blanchett's new comedy that's coming. Gwyneth Paltrow has been cast in Timothy Chalamet and Josh, Josh Safdie's ping pong movie called Marty Supreme. Die Alone. We have the new trailer for Carrie on Moss and Frank Grillo's new action movie. We also have the new trailer for Never Let Go, which is Halle Berry's new horror movie. Um, that is coming out in November, so check out the new trailer there. I'm looking forward to that. There's a new teaser trailer for The Six Triple Eight, which is Tyler Perry's new World War II drama that is coming to Netflix. Christmas is coming early, and we have your Christmas guide to every new holiday TV movie coming in 2024. Sigourney Weaver has confirmed that she does have a role in the upcoming Star Wars, Mandalorian, and Grogu movies, so that is pretty awesome there. Devilina aims to launch an Atlas Comics cinematic universe over at Paramount Pictures. I don't know what Devilina is. I don't really even know what Atlas Comics is. So I haven't heard of this universe or these comics. They look very, very old school. And uh, But hey, I'm always open to new universes. So we'll see if Paramount moves forward to that. We have your first poster for Hellboy the Crooked Man, which looks like it's straight off the DVD rack of 1992. Um, but yes, this hits theaters supposedly on September 27th. Uh, I'm shocked. I am very shocked that this is getting a... Um, that is getting a theatrical release. And I paused for a second because I was looking at the poster, and they've been very adamant to say this is... It's own thing. This has no connection to the other movies, but on the poster, it literally says the fourth installment in the global franchise. It's not the fourth installment if you're your own thing and you're not connected to the other three movies. So I don't know, man, but it looks so bad. This thing looks so, so bad. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, along with Shane Lean Woodley and Richard Madden, are starring in Killer Heat, which is going to premiere on September 26th on Prime Video. Uh, oh man, I thought Never Let Go, the Holly Berry movie came out in November, but I was wrong. It actually is directed by Crawl director Alexandra Aha, and the movie actually hits theaters on September 20th. So there you go, a lot sooner than November. So check out that new trailer, September 20th. We have a new poster for Wolves. This is the George Clooney Brad Pitt movie directed by John Watts, which will be hitting Apple TV Plus on September 27th. We have the new official poster for Legend of Vox Machina Season 3, which looks pretty cool. And then they dropped the um, trailer for it as well. It starts streaming on Prime Video on October 3rd. We have a new poster for Never Let Go with Holly Berry, so check that out. I'm excited to see this, man. I am a big wrestling fan. 
And Netflix is going to be doing and dropping a Mr. McMahon documentary on September 25th. That's right. Mr. McMahon will be a documentary series chronicling the rise and fall of WWE's controversial founder in the coming to Netflix on September 25th. From Chris Smith, executive producer of Tiger King and Bill Simmons, including interviews with, with, with McMahon, Prior to his resignation, his family, and some of the most iconic names in wrestling history, as well as the journalists who have uncovered the McMahon allegations. Ooh, this is going to be something, man. September 25th on Netflix. I know every wrestling fan's going to be watching that one. All right, we knew there was another Jurassic World movie coming next year, and it is now official. We have a name. We heard the rumors. This was the rumor, but now it's official. Jurassic World Rebirth. That's right. Directed by Gareth Edwards. Jurassic World Rebirth. Starring Scarlett Johansson, Jonathan Bailey, Rupert Friend, and Mahershala Ali. We'll hit theaters on July 2nd, 2025. Outer Banks is returning for season four this fall on Netflix. Part one will hit on October 10th, and part two will drop on November 7th. We have the new poster for Julia Garner's new movie, Apartment 7A, which is going to start streaming on Paramount Plus on September 27th. This is the prequel to Rosemary's Baby. Looks pretty damn interesting. The new trailer dropped for it as well, so take a look at that. Barry Keegan has joined the cast of Netflix's Peaky Blinders movie. He will star alongside Killian Murphy and Rebecca Ferguson. We have the new Agatha All Along teaser trailer, so check that out. Of course, two-season, two-episode premiere on Disney Plus September 18th. We have the new poster for Gladiator 2, starring Paul Mescal, Pedro Pascal, and Denzel Washington. The Ridley Scott film will hit theaters on November 22nd. We have the new post- uh, oh, Wizards Beyond Waverly Place. We found out that it will premiere on October 29th on the Disney Channel, and episodes will stream the next day on Disney+. Plus. We have the Outer Banks Season 4 trailer, so check out the first teaser trailer for that. Um, let's see here. We have a cool video that Marvel dropped celebrating its 85th anniversary, so... Pretty damn cool video showing all Marvel everything. It's about two and a half minutes long. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. 85 years for Marvel. Um, Let's see here. We have the poster for Hold Your Breath. Sarah Paulson stars in this movie that will start streaming on Hulu on October 3rd. Ridley Scott's director's cut of his 2023 epic Napoleon has landed on Apple TV+. Plus. We heard a lot of rumors that they wanted to drop this thing, and it is now official. 48 minutes added into this film, which was already a three-hour movie. As now it's almost four hours, but you can stream the director's cut of Napoleon now on Apple TV+. Plus. Um, Alan Wake and Control are going to get TV and movie adaptations. That's pretty cool there. We have the trailer for Winner, which previews the dark comedy biopic starring Amelia Jones, Catherine Newton. Um, Nobody Wants This. We have the new trailer for Kristen Bell and Adam Brody's new Netflix rom-com. Dustin Hoffman and Leo Woodall are set to headline a new crime thriller called Turner from the Oscar winner. Um, Law & Order OC. Dean Norris has been up to a series regular for season 5. The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs has been renewed for season 7. Tom Welling goes undercover to bring down a major crime syndicate in the trailer for Mafia Wars. One Tree Hill sequel series. Yes, this was rumored for a minute, and it is official. One Tree Hill sequel series is officially in the works at Netflix. Sophia Bush and Hilary Burton will executive produce as well as reprise their roles as Brooke Davis and Peyton Sawyer. That's a big one, man. That was a generational show for a lot of people. One Tree Hill. We have the first teaser trailer for The Return of Yellowstone, premiering November 10th on the Paramount Network. We have the first poster for A Complete Unknown, starring Timothy Chalamet. James Mangold's Bob Dylan biopic will hit theaters on Christmas Day, December 25th. The Fall Guy extended cut has 20 extra minutes on it and is now streaming on Peacock. Dead Boy Detectives has been canceled after its one season. This is a show I started and actually really liked. I'm about halfway through it, and then I just kind of got sidetracked by other shows. So kind of a bummer to see that it has been canceled and won't get another season. But it's a pretty good first season, man, so I'd still suggest to check it out. 
Charlie XCX is going to be hitting the big screen, landing her second live action film role for the latest movie with Olivia Wilde and Cooper Hoffman called I Want Your Sex. So congratulations to Charlie for getting that one there. Kinds of Kindness is now streaming over on Hulu. Trump's origin story, The Apprentice, has been acquired by Briarcliff Entertainment and will get a release date hitting theaters on October 11th. We have the trailer for Screamboat, that's right, which previews Mickey Mouse horror movie starring Terrifier's David Howard Thornton. That's right, not only is he Art the Clown, but he is now Steamboat Willie (laughs) in the Screamboat horror movie. Oh, man. We have your September streaming guide. We do this every month. This is your streaming guide to 80-plus premieres across Netflix, Apple TV+, Disney+, Hulu, Max, Paramount+, Peacock, and Prime Video. So check that out. Nicholas Winding Refn is preparing to shoot his first new movie in eight years. He says it'll be full of glitter, sex, and violence. I love it. Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare trailer has officially dropped. This is the horror version of Peter Pan, which is going to hit theaters next year, and is part of the Pooh-averse. That's right. So the Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, you know, they're doing Bambi, they're doing all this stuff. Part of that universe, baby. Justin Thoreau is teasing a potential Tropic Thunder sequel with Robert Downey Jr. saying he is game to return. I would love to see a Tropic Thunder sequel, man. Give it to me. Wolf Creek Legacy. That's right. We are going back to Wolf Creek. It'll send Mick Taylor after a new batch of victims. It will drop next year. Uh, We have the first, uh, well, we just talked about that. Uh, The Penguin, uh, the creators explain why Robert Pattinson's Batman won't appear in the series. And all I'm going to say about that is it's bullshit because there was a lot of rumors that Robert Pattinson Pattinson and Batman were going to show up at least in one episode. I mean, God, this takes place in Gotham literally right after the movie. And you're going to tell me you have a whole series without Batman popping up at least once? I mean, I believe them that he won't pop up, but I'm saying it's bullshit. Like, you're going to do a show like this, you should have definitely had Batman pop up. Or at least Bruce Wayne in a scene. I mean, for God's sakes, come on. All right, moving along, we have the new poster for Agatha All Along. Speaking of All Along, uh, remember, again, it hits Disney Plus on September 18th. I like this new poster. It's really, really good. Um, Disney channels, including ABC, ESPN, have been pulled from DirecTV in a major carriage dispute. Ooh, so if you got DirecTV, you lost a lot of channels in the last couple days. Not good. Get Sling, man. It's a lot cheaper. All right. Uh, uh, Smile 2. We have the new poster and the new trailer. I love the new trailer. The new trailer is so good. It's way better than the original um, trailer that came out. I like Smile 1 a lot. This looks like it's really, really good, and I can't wait for it. Check it out. It's going to hit theaters on October 18th. Check out the new poster. Check out the new trailer. It's awesome. Um, VHS Beyond, we talked about it earlier. We have the trailer. Uh, It will be premiering October 4th on Shudder. It is the seventh installment of the VHS series, and it features segments from Kate Siegel, Mike Flanagan, Justin Long, and a whole bunch more. So I am ready for it. Uh, The ABC daytime panel show The View is shaking things up for its forthcoming 28th season. It will debut on Tuesday, September 3rd. So it debuted earlier today. There you go. Uh, This is a rumor, but supposedly this is happening. Josh Brolin has been offered the DCU role of Hal Jordan for the Lantern show that they're going to be doing on Max. Okay, so... With that piece of news, now this is not official. I just want to stress that this is not official. But the sources around it say this has been, he has been offered the role. Maybe he hasn't signed the contract yet, but it's in his lap. It's up to him if he fully signs on the dotted line or not. But let's just say he does. This is interesting, man. I don't see Josh Brolin as how Jordan. I don't. Uh, I think he's a little too old for what I want. Um, but I love Josh Brolin and it's hard to hate, right? The guy was Thanos. The guy was Cable. He was Jonah Hex. I mean, and now he would get to play Hal Jordan. I mean, how lucky of him to be able to play so many iconic roles. Um, I wouldn't hate it. He's an amazing actor and, you know, great dude. So cool. 
it's just not who I mean. I wanted like Glenn Powell or somebody for Hal Jordan. So I don't know if they're trying to go with the older, grizzled Hal Jordan training a younger, up and coming John Stewart. I'm not sure the direction they're going with it. Um, but that seems to be what I'm guessing if they're going to go with a Josh Brolin. So we will see. Rumor has it that deals have also, or the backups, I should say, are also Matthew McConaughey and Ewan McGregor, that those two names have been tossed out as well as people that it could roll to if Josh Brolin decides not to do it. So we'll keep you posted when it's official official, but as of right now, this is the big rumor that's come out in the last couple of days there. Josh Brolin, Hal Jordan, Green Lantern in The Lantern Show. All right, we got all your best streaming deals for September. Disney Plus, Hulu, Max Bundles, Stars, everything you could use. If you're looking to sign up for something, check out this article to get the best deal. We have your first look at the little teaser of Noah Hawley's Alien Earth, which is coming to Hulu in 2025. And when I say little teaser, I really mean it. It's a head of a xenomorph, and it goes right at the camera, and that's it. So it's literally 15 seconds. And uh, But it's cool, man. It's creepy, and I can't wait to see it. Just some notes on it. It follows a group who make a fateful discovery when exploring a crashed space vessel. It's set 30 years before the first Alien movie. It stars Sidney Chandler, Timothy Oliphant, and Alex Lothar. And like I said, it'll hit Hulu in sometime in 2025. We have the poster for Night Bitch, which stars Amy Adams hitting theaters in December. We also have the trailer that dropped today for it as well, too. It's an odd trailer, man. Basically, she is a mom who is down on her luck. She's struggling with her kids and her husband, and she starts turning into a dog. Yes, I'm not joking. She turns into a dog. I don't know what is going on in this trailer, but... Check it out for yourself. We have the new poster for Joker for Le Edu. Lady Gaga, Joaquin Phoenix. The new poster is dropped. It hits theaters October 4th. I like this new poster. It's simple, but it's cool. We also have two new character posters of Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande for the new Wicked movie, which hits theaters on November 22nd. Um, let's see here. Uh, Peacock is going to be doing a live comedy special from Colin Jost and Michael Che. Of course, these two guys are awesome together, and they do the weekend update on SNL and everything. So that's going to be pretty cool, man. I'll definitely check out something like that. It's called New York After Dark, and that'll be coming to Peacock. Ellen DeGeneres, uh, her new comedy special, For Your Approval, premieres on Netflix on September 24th. This will be her last special. Uh, We have the new trailer for... Uh, perfect couple, the perfect couple, they're rich, kill someone and get away with it. Rich, the perfect couple premieres in two days, starring Nicole Kidman, Lee Schreiber, Megan Fahey, Eve Hewson, Dakota Fanning, Ishan Cotter, Billy Howell, and Jack Rayner. This debuts just in a couple days on Netflix. I think it looks really, really good. I will definitely be checking this show out for sure. We have the new trailer for Matlock, which is the new CBS um, show with Kathy Bates as the character now. We have the new trailer for High Potential with Caitlin Olsen. This is a new ABC crime dramedy. I really like the trailer for this one, man. High Potential has the potential to be a really cool show when it debuts here in a couple weeks. Um, yeah, and that on that note, that's what we got. Um, I just want to make sure I wasn't missing anything, and it doesn't look like it. So that's what we got there to get you guys all caught up with all the news right up to when we started recording. So I hope you feel knowledgeable. I hope you feel like you've gotten everything you need. And again, if you want to watch any of these trailers, read any more articles, go to twitter.com slash am I on the air and just type in that URL and see everything you need. But this has been the episode one, the season premiere of season 29. Are you having a good time? right here on Am I on the Air. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this new episode. I really appreciate you. Let me get you on out of here, but first, got to do some plugs. Am I on the air.com is the official webpage. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash am I on the air. Follow us on X at simply am I on the air. Follow me directly at DX Don Mega. And those are the same handles over on threads. So if you're over there on threads, just search 
dx.mega or am i on the air and give us a follow at the same handles make sure you subscribe to the podcast we're available on apple podcast we're available on spotify iHeartRadio, pandora we're on everything anywhere you listen to podcasts you can find us so make sure you subscribe leave a five-star review thumbs up whatever you can do it really help us out uh, make sure you follow us on all the other social medias, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, just simply Am I On The Air. Uh, you can listen to the podcast on YouTube. You can subscribe there. You can watch videos, whatever you want to do right there on the YouTube channel. And thank you to our great affiliates at Red Dragons Radio and the Pop Culture Pros. Thank you guys for always streaming our show on demand. Follow on X at Red Dragons Radio and Pop Culture underscore pros. And that'll do it for me here on September the 3rd. Um, this weekend, it's Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. That's right. Ready to rock and roll. We rewatched the first movie again the other night to get ready for it showed my daughter it for the first time which was interesting because she's 10 years old the movie was pg i said cool no problem and the movie plays almost like an a very heavy pg-13 that i was not ready for because of the pg rating but thanks a lot 1988 man man just things they could get away with back then but we are ready we are ready to go for beetlejuice beetlejuice and uh we'll be back next week for episode two and uh so same bat time same bat channel Till then, take care of yourselves and each other, and until next time, y'all, peace! Red Dragons!